Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have an intelligent active soldering station. And nowadays the, the active soldering stations are getting more and more popular because they heat very fast. And the heat is really generated in the top instead of in the whole tip. And, um, and well, you know my my it's the famous Weller, it's the WTCPS and, and you have a lot of these uh, nice blue machines and they are super, super reliable, but they are not active. If you, the, the heating here is really done with the heating element and it is around the tip. And while in the active stations, it is really the tip itself that heats. So there is, uh, if you replace the tip, you replace the whole uh, heating element. I will show you that later. So they are very popular because it, the heat is much more concentrated where it uh, should be. And uh, there are a few on AliExpress or on Banggood that are very, very popular. And that is the uh, KSGER T12 or the, or the 956. And uh, it is just black with a nice button with the display. They have the, the stick is T T12 and uh, it looked very nice. You have a, a version two, there is a version three now also. Uh, what the difference is, uh, I, I actually don't know. But I have another one and that is an intelligent active station. And it means you can also update it on the internet if there is new software and it can handle also uh, three irons, so three sticks. There is the normal stick, that is the 936. And it has also different tips, of course. That one heats in about 30 seconds, which is, well, I think it's almost like a normal one. But if you buy the T12, just like you can have in the KSGER, that heats in six seconds. But now with this station, and it automatically detects, and we will see that, uh, there is also a, a, a T245. And that one heats in four seconds. For heating that fast, you really need a big transformer. And uh, well, the, the weller is about 50 watts, I think, or 75. But this one is 200 lower watts. Let me show you what is in the box. Okay, here it is. It is the Ac Action. Well, like Action, but then kind of Chinese, I think. I Action. Um, what's in here should be the T3A. Well, I don't know if this is, this seems like a XLT or something, but let's see what is in there. And I saw on AliExpress on the page that you can op update it with uh, gcprogrammer.com. But uh, when I look in the bottom of the box, here it says uh, that you need to go to actiontech.com. So let's see where we can find the update. Oh, no, it even says here. Here you need to go for your updates. Okay, so that is all good. Look at this. <laughs> Here is the station itself. And indeed, I received the T3A, so that's good. 200 watts high power, remote PC upgrade, huge display. Well, this looks like a nice box. It goes with the different tips, with the T12, the 936, and the 245, and I have the 245. And here are some accessories. So, let's have a look at the station. Nice booklet. Smart soldering station. Wow, proper, proper booklet. Look at this. Wow. This is properly packed. Almost like you're opening an Apple box. Look, aluminium. Wow. Here is the USB. Proper USB. USB 3. Round one. Wow. And it's heavy, so it doesn't move. Ah, that's because the power is in here. What is in the back? There is even an output 24. 
And there is another board. I don't know what it is. Integrated cooling. Wow. This looks cool. Okay. Warning. Well, let me first check if it works. This looks very fancy. I like it already. It's already translated. Set say I change or channel button. Okay, so what is in here? Oh yeah, it comes with three tips. Yeah, I got the 245, so that's good. It's a very sharp point. It has some kind of flat point and another pointy point. Then we have the sticks. Well, this is the 245. So this should heat in uh, four seconds. A power plug, a weird one. A converter. Okay, what is this? Ah. This is the holder. And the nice thing is the holder is also smart. So uh, there is a timer and it will uh, go to sleep when you're not using it. But it is not just a timer from when you push a button or something. No, it is really a timer. It detects if it's in in the station or not. And that is why it's one of these plugs. And uh, this is the import. The other one was OPC. So. And a ground pin also. But we then use the import. <laughs> At least that would make sense. And we put it in here, so it is connected to the station, then the tips you just push in. So This is the whole active tip, so the heating element is in this tip. And uh, well, it's just pushing it in, and it's stuck. Of course, when it's hot, you cannot pull it. I think you have uh, special clots for that silicon uh, things, silicon, and uh, oh, how does this work, because oh, it probably, it's not touching the, the thing in the back, but I think this is just all connected, and then this touches this, and then it knows it is in the station. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, instead of using this weird stuff and an adapter, look at this. This is. I can use my own. Because it is just zero pin, and I'm not sure it's by default is grounded or not. But if it is, then I maybe make that switchable. Okay. Well, let me just switch it on and see what happens. If it's in Japanese or in English. Well, half, half, half. It detects already it's the T245. Local temperature 21 degrees. Okay, what can we do? Okay, that is fun. But uh, this seems like a globe. How I uh, go down. Ah. Is it done? Okay. Yeah. No, that was cancelled, apparently. So, go. That is a bit confusing because I would have thought if you 
push, that's accept. Now you go up and down, but you don't. So I push, and then I do then set. Yeah, ah, kijk, here it is. Okay. Calibrate, we can calibrate it. Set the language, maximum temperatures you can set 500. Close to maximum, yeah. Just too close to maximum. Lock temp. System info. This is the T3A version 1.19. Now we can see later if we can uh, update that. If it is needed, the sound we can switch on and off. Well, we know what we're gonna do with that. Okay, back. Okay, how we set now the temperature. Now I just take it out. Look at this. Puff, it's hot. Whoa. Okay, that was kind of crazy fast. Um, here in the bottom you see the temperatures. And uh, I'm now at 380, 280, 350. Well, 350 is default. I'm letting it cool down and we're gonna try this again. Well, by default it comes with uh, three tips. Here is a nice one. Very pointy. Then there is kind of a weird one. And you have this one. And you can see, here are the contact uh, points. So the heating element is inside. So also, when the heating element is broken, you buy just a new tip. I order also some extra tips. So a little bit of a normal one. Probably less pointy as the one that is in there. And I wanted the flat one, but I think I bought a little bit too big. So, but it is okay if I need to really, I have 200 watts, so if I really need power, I will use this one and this one. And for my normal work, I probably use, uh, use this. Let's have a look again how fast it heats. So I'm just taking it out of the holder. And here the temperature goes. Oh, now it reboots. Puff. Hot. Okay, that is super weird. I think it wants to heat so fast that the power supply just drops too much that the device uh, reboots. Look at this. That is super weird. It didn't happen the first time. So let's first see if there is an update. Okay, that is super weird. Let's have a look to their website, the GC programmer. Um, here we see indeed uh, our device, this one, if we click on it, and the three types. So if we click here on the first one, that is the 936 version, and it seems indeed that this is not an active one. So that's why it takes also the 30 seconds. And the T12, that is like the other T12 from uh, KSGR. And here are the three tips that you can have. And this is the one that is here. That is the one that heats in four seconds. And well, this is this version. Well, nice. But where do we get the software? 200 watts, remote PC, big display, temperature. Nou, allemaal goed, goed, good. Here we have the tips. Big power supply, well that seems to be a little problem right now, so but maybe an update will fix that. I hope. And we need to install here this thing. Okay. Well, good. Then we go to the download center. The platform package.
failed network error. Hmm. We try again. Yes, now it worked. Well, I've antivirus installed, so I can run it anyway. Apparently, it is installed now a driver. Uh, I think it is asking for an update because it, here it says 108 and here it says 106, so let's do that. And then we need to see if we can change the language. Okay, we tried that again. I have now my uh, phone. And with my phone I can translate. So we need to go here. And then this is uh, setup. If I remember correct, let me get my Google Translate. So we take this one, then we have this screen, and this is the language, and that is now Chinese. And if we go to the bottom, that should be English, but they also put that in Chinese, just to be sure. Yeah, that is English. Then we need to push an OK button and then we type and save. OK, now everything is in English. Tool up, it is an update tool. It is uh, not that clear. OK, let me just try to connect them together. Stick the USB in it. And just to be sure, we just get the device manager, see what I will switch it on, by the way, switch it on. Uh, see what port it will create. And 13 is extra. Okay. Okay, I put now my second camera to the display of the of the solar station. And we need to select port 13. Well I, it seems that it already found things. Version 122. New version, okay. Well, let's uh, install, I think. How do we update? Do we need to push? Yeah, but the driver was already installed because it's already connected, so... No, I just want to update it. What button do I need to push? Well, I have no clue what I can do with this software, but I think it automatically already put it to 122. And it says here new version, but they probably mean the latest version. Because I'm not sure, I need to reply uh, what the version was. I didn't push a special button to do this, but I think when it was connected it already updated it. And the rest, I don't know what this is. It, it, I don't see it respond. This is maybe from another device from their brand. Uh, I don't see the amp meter changing when I when I take the iron. When I do this, I just see it heating very fast, and it doesn't crash anymore. Uh, so apparently, we did somehow an update. Well, that update went very very fast, and I I didn't even see when it did it. Uh, but I know because I just replay my, my video, uh, we were on 1.19 and now we are on version 1.22. So there is no need to create an account. It's just when you plug it into the USB, the program is on, you know which COM port it created. Well, I didn't ne even need to change the COM port because it automatically detected the device because it set it automatically to COM 13. 
And when I look again, we were in version 122 and I really didn't know what, what we have done. But you could see in the software, you can change your background, you can change your font and the font color. The only thing, the only reason I didn't do that, because I see multiple fonts and I see multiple colors. So I would have no idea which font I was changing. So I didn't do it because it kind of looks good right now. And um, let's see if it uh, still uh, crashes. It's now 31 degrees. So that is, well, my room is now already 24. But uh, let's get it. Puff, it's hot. So it's a little bit slower, but I think they just kept the limit from the power supply. And uh, it works. It is still a few seconds. It's super fast. Okay, I changed now the tip and I have the biggest one available. And uh, let's see, because it has a bit more mass, then it should, uh, it should take longer. And let's see if the power supply also here. You can see how much power it is uh, giving to the, to the heating element. And uh, it should take a little bit longer. It does, because it is a lot bigger. But here, it's already smoking. That is really, really super fast. Wow. And with this one, you can really get things done. So, well, that was not really a review. Not a review at all. I'm just showing you my, uh, my new uh, intelligence station. And uh, what I've seen so far, it's at least one positive thing. They still do maintenance on the software. And as you could see, it had a bug in the in the 1.19 software where it uh, put so much power to the, to the iron itself or to the heating element that the voltage dropped and the power supply could not handle it. Now it heats a little bit less fast. We could see that also. That is the price that you pay, but now it is all bit in the limits and it doesn't crash. So that's a real good thing. Well, I will play a bit more with it and uh, and also with the screen capture with the computer. I will add my uh, screenshots from the from the phone where I had my live translator, and that could be helpful. Also, if you want to update your firmware, because if you have the 1.19 as you saw, it will maybe crash. At least if you have the 245, because that one really takes all the power. If you have the one below or the T12, maybe you don't even have that problem. But uh, I think that will be helpful. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.